Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. In this video I'm going to be talking about my custom work and the commies that I work with that help me develop my product line with Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. Now all the, the knives that I feature on my website are handmade, nothing production whatsoever. Everything is handmade, built in a traditional fashion, and I'll with the further explanation I'm going to be doing when showing the pieces that we have done together. Uh, the commies that I've worked with, uh, one of them, uh, all three of them I've already mentioned in my videos. One is uh, Baroon Borelli with Kotang Cookery Handicrafts, and the other one with Gurkha Blades, Neem Tenji. Also, with um, the guy who's doing my product line that I work with from Nepal, that's Raju Borelli, who's um, my teammate. So, uh, but I'm going to start off showing a custom design, not by me, but by a friend of mine, and many of you guys know him. Uh, he works with and has presented a lot of his ideas with uh, Barun Borelli and with T Neem Tanji, Raju Borelli, and others. Um, and that is Daniel Murray Lake. Now, he, uh, one of the first designs that he submitted to Baroon Borelli to do for him was Thorn. And this is a cookery that is uh, offered exclusively on my website. This is a design that he did on a drawing board. It's very fantasy and futuristic looking cookery, and yet it is a 100% functional piece. There is nothing uh, just decorative and plain and, and uh, a non-functional uh, to this cookery. All the decoration you see, even the, the uh, lines that are like fuller lines, uh, serve a purpose in lightening this blade. It, it's about a quarter inch uh, stock and it has a 90 degree spine on it, which is great for throwing sparks off a ferro rod that which works very good. I love the fit and finish of this uh, cookery as well. It has a satin finish up here at the top and a nice polished uh, edge right where the grind is. has a convex edge, recurve blade like all cookeries have, um, but more of a slender profile, very similar to a serapati, which makes this a very light cookery. Uh, right now we got trash trucks moving through the neighborhood, so uh, bear with me on this. Hopefully you can hear it. Um, and also, he does some really beautiful decorations in this beautiful horn handle. Uh, with these little di uh, pyramid or, or uh, diamond shapes that he's uh, incorporated in there. Uh, beautiful rings and accents really set this off as a beautiful piece, but yet it is really comfortable in the hand. To me, this is like a lady's handshake. It's, it, the grip fits your hand really good, but it is, um, you know, it, it fits my hand really, really well. And it is a very, very fast, uh, useful cookery. It's one that you could easily put on your mantle and, and be a conversation piece, but yet it's one that you would definitely take off the mantle, put it in its scabbard, and go backpacking with, or day hike, or, or to your campsite, because it's a 100% functional cookery. Now, he also did a wonderful design uh, on this scabbard. It's still made traditionally with the wood and the, the buffalo hide stretched over it, but instead of the stitching being on the back, it is on the cutting edge. And the reason for this is because Daniel's uh, vision for this was that it would be ambidextrous. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Daniel is left-handed. So he really he thinks about this when he, in his design. He is designing for people of both right and left-handed use. So you have the ribbing on it that goes all the way around that allows this to be turned and put in its um, put in the frog and carried on the left side or on the right side. Not only that, you have two belt options. You have a belt loop on this side and a belt loop on the front. Front's kind of an interesting one because you wouldn't even have to take the uh, scabbard out of the frog to accommodate a right-hand use or left-hand use because you could actually uh, bring your belt right through the front of this and have it right by your side, a little higher carry, or you could um, actually turn it around and put the belt through for left-hand carry. 
So there's multiple carry options uh, for this scabbard, and it also accommodates a righty and a lefty. Very intelligently done. A uh, very light scabbard. Form follows function. It's perfect for this cookery. The cookery slides in and slides out very easily. When I first saw the notches up here at the spine, I thought, boy, that's going to be hard to pull in and out of the scabbard. But did you see me struggle with this cookery, taking it out of the scabbard? Not at all. It slides in and out of the scabbard beautifully. Form follows function to a T on this, and it holds the cookery. It doesn't fall out. Daniel, Mer uh, Daniel Murray Lake does a lot of designs with a lot of different commies. Um, he's doing it for the love of, of being a designer. I don't know that he's really getting paid for this, uh, for his designs, although he should be. Any uh, Daniel Murray Lake cookery is going to have his signature on it, which is this circled cross. It will always appear on his pommels. And uh, he does beautiful designs, and it's a pleasure to have him as a friend and also as a, a designer who's contributing to the website. Now, with Maroon Borelli, as I mentioned in uh, the previous video that I did of Maroon Borelli's uh, team and Kotang Cookery House, I told you that I uh, wanted to try him out for, with a design of my own. Well, this is the cookery that we used as the basis for uh, the design that I did with him. This is a World War I or a Victorian era cookery. It is, uh, this one isn't one of the longer ones. This is a shorter one, the uh, Bonapari, I think that they call it, or Bopari. And it's, uh, it's got a very thick spine, but it tapers right down to a very fine point. So this is what was great about the commies of old, is they knew the geometry of the blade and what works really, really well. This is a flat grind that comes right down to a convex edge. You have um, a very thick spine that, that narrows down to a very fine tip. This is a beautiful and very well-crafted uh, cookery. Light, strong, durable. Um, obviously, this point, even though it's, it's narrowed down to such a fine tip, that tip is strong enough to where it did not break, and this was used in a time of war and is over a hundred years old. And look at the shape it's in. It's in great shape. Stick tang that only goes to this part. That handle is 100% solid. But this isn't about this. This is about how we use this particular cookery to come up with the design that we did together. Now this is an old scabbard, so I take my time in putting it in. This is the design that we came up with that I already showed you guys. But that was the cookery we based it off. Now I did some changes to the design. I didn't want it. I we used that as my um, basis uh, for design. But I drew it out on paper uh, with the specifications that I wanted. I wanted a hollow forged. I wanted a quarter inch stock. Um, it didn't have to taper down uh, so finely as this one because I have lighten the blade with a hollow forge, which will allow me to still have a very strong point for stabbing and prying or whatever I want to do with this cookery. But as you can see, the shape is very reminiscent of that particular cookery I showed you. In this case, we also chose to put a stick tang that went all the way through to the keeper that, that Baroon designed with the sun, um, the sun uh, uh, keeper and with a steel pommel, high polished. Now the blade itself has a satin finish, very much like the original. It has the deep fuller lines up here at the spine and a beautiful cowdy. So he did a tremendous job in uh, making a very functional, um, updated version of that cookery of antiquity. And there's nothing wrong with the design of the cookery of antiquity. That's a great one to, to come back again and do maybe an exact replica of it. But I wanted to just use it as um, a model for my new design. So this was one of the designs that I worked with with Varun Borelli as far as you know, coming from me and him working together. I wanted to see how we would do together in uh, working out an idea together. 
Next one was Neem Tanchi. Now, Neem Tanchi, I mentioned in the last video that I did, that I work a lot with him in producing my own designs. The first design that I presented to him was my favorite cookery of all time, and that is the Hanchi. And I picked out an antique Hanchi that I had photos on. I, fortunately, I was able to find out the measurements for it. And so we included the measurements along with uh, the photos. And this is the Han Hanchi Lambeth. And this is a, he did a, such a beautiful, beautiful job. And this is the prototype. This one is the first one that we did together. It has a beautiful cowdy, very wide cowdy, which is what would be on a traditional Hanchi. The deep fuller lines up here at the top. Um, beautiful shape, thin profile uh, blade, very fast, uh, light cookery, can easily be used with one hand, and yet it has a handle that's ample size for two-handed use. So this is uh, very well done. Now, original would have a stick tang that would come in halfway, so we have a halfway tang on this. Neem suggested that we put a pin in here just to give added security and to make pe people feel more secure with such a large blade. So we went ahead and we did that. Uh, otherwise, it has uh, no butt plate or tain. It's uh, beautiful, beautifully grained um, Indian um, rosewood. And it's beautiful. He did such a great job on this. I love this piece. And uh, the scabbard, again, you know, not too thick, fits the cookery beautifully. Look how easy it is to take this long blade out of this scabbard and to return it back. He did a masterful job. Comes with a traditional style uh, carta that has a really good edge on it. It's big enough to be used for skinning or doing anything that you would need it to do. And it even has a 90 degree spine. You could throw sparks off a ferro rod with it. Same thing with the carta. I mean, with the chakmuk, if I can get the chakmuk out. Yeah. <laughs> it's fit in there really, really well. I may have pushed it in too far. Uh, here, let me get it. So, they normally aren't stuck in that way, I, that far in. I just uh, got a little overexcited the last time I put it in. So, this is the chakmuk. This is what it looks like. It has a 90 degree spine um, and yet still follows that traditional form. Very beautiful. And it does fit in so you can get it out and yet it still stays in without falling out. Now, this is the half tang version. The traditional uh, one that we first worked up. I also asked him if we could also offer a full stick tang version and so we did it. We came up with the same Hanchi Limbaf, and again, you got that nice wide uh, carta or cowdy. I mean, you have the deep fullers, the, the lean profile. It's very light and fast, but it's a stick tang that goes all the way back to a butt plate and keeper. And of course, it has that beautiful keeper that Neem is known to do. Plus, it has the pin going through the tang, which gives it that added strength. So this is good. It gives you this. All the strength of a of a um, pan wall cookery uh, stick tang. This thing's going to last for a long time. That's it's a very beautiful piece. And again, the scabbard fits that cookery beautifully. You can easily put it in and take it out. And it comes with the traditional carta and chakmak uh, that patterns after the uh, the hanchi lembath. Same thing with the carta. Now, another thing that he does really good is he puts that hole in there that you can put a lanyard, a small lanyard through uh, to tie it either to your scabbard or something, just in case you're running in it and one of these does pop out, you know, you don't lose it. Um, otherwise, you really, you know, it's very secure in there. It isn't going to fall out. Now, another project that we did together, along with the Hanchi line, I have a antique a uh, hanchi that has an aluminum grip, so it, it very well could have been roughly around World War I time. Um, I like the size of it, the feel, the weight of it, and I wanted to do something that we could reproduce and make a very trail-friendly, camp-friendly, 
backpacking friendly cookery. It's not heavy at all. This is a very light piece and yet a very functional piece. It has a quarter inch stock steel, so this isn't flimmy, some uh, flimsy piece of, uh, of cutlery here. This is one that is designed to be used. It's got a substantial amount of spine to it and yet has a beautiful cutting edge, very slim profile, which makes it very light in the hand and fast. This could is great for martial arts, doing your test cuts, bottle cuts, um, but it's it was designed so you could take it on a day hike, you could take it backpacking and feel like you have a, a cookery that will do the chopping task that you need, splitting logs, building a, a, a shelter, processing, you know, you could get in there and do your whittling with it so easy, it's so light, and uh, it's 100% uh, very functional, but elegant, beautiful Hanchi style. This is the Dragonfly Hanchi that Neem, Tanji, and I did together. Again, it has that beautiful, uh, beautiful designed keeper on the spine. Stick tang goes all the way through. Now we have two versions. We have this one with the Indian rosewood, and we have one with the uh, horn handle. Looks really beautiful with the horn handle. And again, scabbard form follows function, very simple. It has the same qualities that Neem is known for with the Celtic knot. Same thing with the larger hand, she has that also um, for the bolts, for the uh, shape. Now, another one that we did, which was a remake of a historical one, and this one is one that I believe is probably one of the earlier uh, uh, British uh, standard issues that they were trying to produce during World War One. This one, it has the three fullers up on the top and that beautiful uh, cowdy. I did show you three examples of this in the, uh, one of the first videos that we did uh, in this series of production cookeries versus handmade cookeries from Nepal. So with this particular design, what we did is I asked him, let's, let's reproduce this. Now the first model, I asked him to do one change to it, and that was put a stick tang all the way through the, to the uh, butt of the cookery without a plate and put a keeper on the end. Um, we did two versions of this. This is the first prototype, which he, he nailed it. He got it really, really good. Look at that beautiful cowdy that he did. Um, the three fuller lines up at the top. This is a beautiful design, uh, very slight hollow grind to it. So it's a really light and fast, but a very solid heavy chopper as well. A quarter inch stock that does, this one does taper towards the tip. So it did a fantastic, fantastic job. A beautiful Indian rosewood handle, stick tang that goes all the way back to the beautiful keeper that he put on it. Now the second one that we did, so there's two versions of this same cookery in the series that a uh, customer can request either the half tank or the full tank. Now the half tank model does not have a pin going through, but it is a solid grip. I would have it here to show you, but that one's sold. <laughs> but uh, it is offered on my website, and you can offer with a, uh, a half tank or the full stick tank. But this was an excellent example of what we were doing together in doing a traditional style cookery. Comes with a scabbard that's beautiful. Has a military shape on it, military style. Can military frog uh, with, the, with the brass pins. And it comes with a very useful, fully functional carta. This has a beautiful grind on it. Uh, again, it's the drop point or spear point blade, substantial handle. You can do a lot of carving with this. A great companion to go with this. Along with a traditional style uh, chakma. 90 degree spine you could throw sparks off a ferro rod with. Excellent, excellent um, companions. And they don't fall out. Now one thing that we didn't add on this one but is add on the future ones is that we do offer a tender pouch. And let me tell you, on the new scabbard that he did with this, uh, in this version, the leather is even softer than this one. High quality leather. And that tender pouch is really a nice soft leather pocket. 
it feels so beautiful. It's excellent. You want to put things in there, and it's easy to take things out, and it, it really is a functional tender pouch. So all in all, the design working with Neem has been really, really great. Now, I wanted to do custom knives, and um, I'm not a, I have a blown out shoulder, I'm not, you know, as physically fit as I was when I was younger, so swinging my own mallet is uh, kind of out of the question these days. So I, you know, fortunately, Neem is a guy that I can give my modern designs to. One of the first projects that we did together that was not a cookery was this Jim Bowie Bowie. This is copied or taken from a Bowie that, uh, or Bowie, that Bowie knife that was gifted by James Bowie to an actor friend of his. Um, now, I didn't want to do an exact replication of it. Um, I used it as a pattern because this was a popular pattern during the time that Jim Bowie was around, which was uh, predating the Mexican-American War. This predating uh, the time period and up to the time period that Texas won its independence from Mexico. So this goes all the way back to the Davy Crockett era and uh, with the, with the um, uh, black powder guns. So this would be a great piece for reenactment. And I wanted something that would be a great camp tool, so I put a little bit more belly on the front of it where it was more slender, so that this would be an excellent chopper. You could use this to process an elk or a moose with it. Um, you could get in there and you could do your skinning with it. Um, it's got a flat grind, goes all the way down to a nice convex edge, a 90 degree spine so you could throw sparks off a ferro rod with it. And what is very accurate is during that time period when they had, they used wood or bone handles, this is, happens to be the Indian rosewood handle, they would score the wood very deeply to add a texture so it wouldn't slide out of your hand. Another thing that they did is that they would uh, broaden the back of the blade and, or back of the handle and widen it also so that it would stay in your hand and not fly out. I added a lanyard hole. Um, but this is a full tang, so you might call it a pan wall with a bolster, steel bolster. This is a wonderful chopper, very, very sharp knife, and works and functions really great. Another thing that's really good about the scabbard here is like Daniel uh, Murray Lakes, it has a stitching on the outside here, so this is ambidextrous. You could slide this frog off, and as you can see, the ribbing goes all the way around on both sides. So you could change your, your design or method of carry. It could be a left-handed or a right-hand carry to this particular knife. So it accommodates both lefties and righties. Very light and very good scabbard. And look, it's easy to take in and out. And it doesn't fall out. Plus it has that shape, that beautiful shape that Neem is known for with a Celtic knife. Excellent, excellent job. Another one that we did together was a Malaysian Janap Parang. And this was one of my designs. I kind of combined the Philippines along with uh, the Malaysian style. So traditionally they would be in a wood scabbard, so we made a wood scrap, scabbard. Neem put his beautiful shape on it to kind of uh, beautify it, and it helps hold that wood together and protects the tip from uh, cracking or, or getting banged up too badly. Beautiful, beautiful job for a Janup. This is a, has, he, he's not, this is not a uh, Neem's culture. And yet, and I asked him, let's put a hollow grind on it and a false edge up at the top because it would go from thicker to thinner to the tip as a good Janup would be. This is used for snap cuts and draw and um, you know, slashing cuts, you know, it's, it's a, a martial arts weapon, but it's also a bush sword, a bush knife. So you would take it out in the jungle with you. has a, a convex edge, sharp all the way to this point here. you got a slight finger choil, so you could get in there and do your whittling. Um, it is just, he, he nailed it. I gave him the drawings and told him what I wanted. And it doesn't get any better than this. He followed it right to a T. And what I did is I incorporated a Filipino-style hand, which would handle 
uh, that I have on one of my barangs, or um, yeah, it's a it's a bolo that I have it on, and I love the feel and the design of the handle, so I incorporated it in this. So this is um, an Indonesian or a Pacific Island uh, uh, parang, Jeanette parang, made for martial arts and for bushcraft. But you could you could take this out and use it in the field very easily. Now, of course, there's no frog to, to carry this on the belt. This would be stuck in a backpack or slidden through a uh, patuka um, because of the ridge here. It holds it there and keeps it from sliding out. Very traditional. Now, another uh, set of designs that I ran past him was some of my own knife designs. And these are 100% handmade. In other words, they're, they're forged. And, and handmade just exactly as the cookeries are. Yet this is my, uh, my bush knife, or not bush knife, but I call it the camp knife. It's actually based off of a Japanese tanto. In the Japanese tantos, what they would do up here at the spine is they would do a little groove in here, like a chira, be right up at the top of the spine to lighten the blade, and yet allow for enough of a point angle here, if you can see it, uh, where it's substantial enough to allow for a thrust to go through armor so that the, the uh, tip was armor piercing and yet wouldn't break. Now, most Japanese blades are uh, laminated steels with a ha haman, but this one does not have the haman, but it is differentially uh, treated. In other words, it's softer in the spine and it has uh, a little bit softer in the middle and hardest on the edge. And this is a wonderful, fantastic chopper. But the other thing, now, you guys have been watching my series, you know that I care about the handles. The handles is the most important, as equally as important as the blade design. In this particular one, I told Neem I want the Coke bottle design. This is a true American uh, classic design handle, where it's thinner up here, swells at the palm, and then uh, swears, swells a little bit, narrows in and then swells out a little bit at the at the tank. This is a Coke bottle design and it has a really nice belly curve to it to where it fits in your hand, doesn't create hot spots, and is comfortable. This is that handshake. You handshake this and this will be your friend, man. And I'll tell you, you could trust on it. Um, this is, he really pulled off my design. I couldn't be more pleased with his, uh, his um, application of my design. And it comes all the way, you know, you have a nice um, hand guard to protect your hand from sliding up on the cutting edge. You have a bird beak pommel with a lanyard hole. And that bird beak panel, uh, uh, pommel allows you to get extended grip so you could do extended chopping with it. And yes, you can chop with this, you can slice with it, um, you could draw cut with it. Um, you know, it's just, it is a really wonderful knife, a 10 inch uh, blade. And to, to keep it, um, here's a traditional modern design uh, that is inspired by knives of, and, and blades of antiquity. We also partnered it with Kydex sheath. And yes, Neem knows how to make Kydex. This is what makes him really relevant in today's market of the 21st century, makes him relevant as a knife maker in all fields, in all areas. He's, he is a very intelligent and very gifted kami who thinks outside the box. Notice how it snaps in there. Excellent. It's what it's supposed to do. Easy draw, easy come back, locks in. You don't need a strap to strap it in. It's going to stay there. It's tight. And it's, you know, you have a lot of different lashing points. The only thing about this scabbard that I'm going to do differently is we're going to put a, a drainage hole in the bottom to allow water to come through it. A dangler, leather, uh, leather frog up at the top, or your belt, or you could uh, attach your belt through this loop here. The D guard allows you to have, not have to worry about taking the knife off of your belt. You can move it out of the way when you're sitting down. All in all, excellent execution. Now I wanted an EDC knife, and I love recurves, so I came up with this design and gave it to Neem. Again, 100% hand forged blade. This is done traditionally in the Kami style. 
and it has it's a nice um, high but flat grind that comes down to a convex edge. This is a recurve blade, sharp all the way through here. This is, I think, a 7-inch blade or 6-inch blade. This is meant to be an EDC, able to be carried on your belt and used throughout the day. False grind up here at the top with enough point to make it a very strong and durable point, which is exactly how I designed it to, to be and do. It is functional. It looks sweet, too. 90 degree spine, you can throw sparks off a ferro rod, plus you have a finger choil for getting in there and doing your wooding, whittling. And the Coke bottle design handle, it swells a little bit on the sides here at the, at the pommel and up here at the, the, where the cutting business is to keep your hand off the cutting business. Integrated finger guard and bird beak pommel, nice palm swell, fits in the hand, really, really comfortable. And the handle's long enough to accommodate people with big hands, medium hands, or small hands. For my hand, I got a lot of ink, a uh, lot of handle here that I can utilize. I can go and, and wrap my finger around the bird beak, and I can do some chopping with this nice recurved blade. I got a nice little chopping area too. If I don't have a larger knife with me, lanyard hole, you know, quarter inch thick steel. 51, I think this one is a ball bearing steel that Neem uses on all these blades. Uh, there may be some exceptions where he does do 5160. Again, a kydex sheath. And this is what I love about him, man. I, I give him the information. I, I tell him this is what we want. We want the taco shell for this particular one. Water drainage hole. Different lashing points. It has a nice belt, belt loop. It hangs really nice on the side, and even put the little thumb push, uh, the little thumb ramp, to allow you to push this knife out and to draw it, putting it back in. Doesn't fall out. Form follows function to a T, and he did a great job with this, this design of mine, and this is called the Spitfire. The, the Spitfire and the camp knife. And this is why I really enjoy working with Neem Tanji. I can give him modern designs. I can draw anything on the board and hand it to him and he isn't afraid to try to ta tackle it even with modern day materials. Um, in the future I'd like to maybe do a micarta handle on both of these knives. That would be really cool. You can also order them with horn handles if you wish. Although this wood is really beautiful and, and does a great job with these knives. Now, that was uh, Barun Borelli and Neem Tanji and um, the custom work that I've done with them. Now, I've also done a lot of custom work with Roger Borelli, but I've given him two specific designs that came from here, <laughs> from me. The first, first one that I'm going to show you is the... Um, uh, Adi Parashakti Hanchi, and this is in honor of Durga, uh, the Hindu goddess. She is the um, the supreme. Um, she's the wife of Shiva, and so I wanted to uh, truly Hindu um, honoring cookery, and so I took the old design of the Gorkhalis, which was the, um, the Hanshi. We put a hollow forge in it, and then we put uh, very elaborate Hindu uh, symbols, symbolism, on the, up here at the spine, and uh, right here. Plus we do Sanskrit all the way around, which is taken from uh, an ancient Sanskrit uh, text. Uh, this is the same one that you see on the side of the, the blades on some of the other ones that he and I did together. Uh, beautiful brass ring around there. The ohm symbol carved into the wood. Then you also have the sim a lot of symbols in the decoration of the, uh, the pummel and the keeper. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece. And this is one that he and I connected so much on that there were things that I didn't think about. I only showed him a rough sketch of this, a rough sketch. I didn't get, didn't 
I didn't flesh it out and put all the measurements, all that. As soon as he saw it, he knew what it was that we were doing, and he went after it and built it and built it perfectly, right to a T, and put it with a beautiful scabbard. I like this. this is less is more. It's not super fancy. Um, it it the you have this ring that goes all the way around, traditional made. Uh, this the um, frog slides right off. Very good, solid, thick piece of leather. It's 100% uh, functional and a very, very beautiful piece. I, and it's so light. Oh my God! You know, this is this is a fast cookery. It is. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased with the outcome. Then another design that we did, and this was. Um, I've seen a lot of. Uh, commies that are making cookeries that are supposed to be marketing to the um, the Western consumer, whether it be European or, or the United States. And they'll try to westernize the handle and they're really, you know, not the best handles. Uh, not a good job. They haven't researched it well. So I decided to do two things. I wanted to make a cookery with a style blade that I love a lot that's a traditional cookery blade with a single chira so this is a ik chira beautiful curve from antiquity this would be come from the um, uh, the mutiny period um, or the Victorian era and then I wanted to put a truly American style designed uh, handle to it. So it again has that um, that coke bottle shape to it where you have a palm swell, you have a swelling towards the, the pommel and a swelling towards the, the you know the cutting business, the blade part and a nice belly to it. So it fits in your hand, it's comfortable, doesn't create hot spots, a true modern handle on a traditional blade and now you have a a really beautiful, very light, very fast quarter inch stock that tapers down. Um, beautiful, beautiful job uh, by Raju Borelli and he again caught the vision of what I was after and did it. And he also put the, the script on it for me. Um, but this one you can order without it. Excellent, excellent job. Um, you had to customize the sheath a little bit to where it, it fits this blade and then it comes with this carta which is a beautiful carta that you can do um, you could do your skinning with your your it's a hundred percent functional little guy and it's beautiful and traditional and then we also uh, did the Chakmak, which is also a traditional style. Very, very well done. And also has a tender pouch with it, military frogs, paduka buttons, and yes, the frog slides off, so you could stick this in a backpack if you wanted to. So these are the designs that I came up with with the commies that are working with me. And um, I think I'm showing and demonstrating with this that these commies are extremely talented, smart, and can take on any task that you give them. And they can do it in the traditional way, and in some cases, even moder bring some modernization to, to a very well-established uh, well and uh, masterful craft as commies from Nepal. At this uh, pretty much concludes this particular one. This is for... Uh, my website at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. Please like and subscribe on my YouTube page. Message me with any comments or questions or anything on Facebook at Blue Dragonfly Training Post. Please visit my website at DragonflyCookeryandKnives.com. In the next video, it's going to be the conclusion of production cookeries versus handmade co uh, cookeries and my concluding thoughts on it. Thank you very much for walk watching. Namaste. God bless. Happy holidays.